Hey, World Cruisers. Today is Wednesday, August 7, 2024. We're on the Ultimate World Cruise, and we're coming to you from Klaipeda, Lithuania. And this is the welcome we received as we stepped uh, ashore. It was refreshing to see a place that welcomes uh, tourists. So many of the places we've been in Europe really uh, becoming negative towards the tourists. And we didn't receive uh, great welcomes to the places, some of the places we've been. But here in Lithuania, it looks like they're actually glad to see us. And of course, we always contribute to the economy every place we stop. So there's some genuine Lithuanian music for you, one of the Baltic states. So as I was waiting for the bus to show up for our tour, there was this abandoned shipyard that was right uh, next to the ship. And there's this old ship sitting there up on blocks. And I kind of wondered what the history was. And then as it turned out, as we came back into port, our tour guide said that that shipyard was abandoned at the beginning of World War II when the Germans invaded. And it's been sitting there like that ever since, so 80 plus years. So this is the central square of, of Klaipeda. And from that balcony right there, Adolf Hitler w welcomed Lithuania to, to Germany uh, when they invaded. And uh, th this is the only part of Old Town Klaipeda that's still uh intact after there was a great fire in 1854 that destroyed most of the wooden structures in the city so these old warehouses were saved because the wind apparently changed direction and it's the only surviving part of the wooden structures that uh, remained after the fire of 1854 and the old fort that's been around since the 1200s uh, to protect the harbor was dismantled by citizens using the building materials for other houses. So, so as the tour went on, I was getting kind of nervous about the quality of what we're going to see when the lady took us to see this this downspout off of a building. It's nothing but a rain downspout that looks like a dragon. And I'm thinking to myself, boy, what have we gotten ourselves into here? Not every tour is is a uh, is a home run or a, a grand slam. It's the next thing she showed us was this lucky mouse. And so I'm by now I'm thinking, uh oh, this isn't going to be very good. And then there was a community chessboard right next to the mouse. And uh, I went over to check out what the pieces were made of. They're just like uh, injection molded hollow plastic pieces. But it was actually another place in town that had a similar chessboard, so a good place for community people to get together. So every European city worth its salt has a, runner, a river running through it for transportation purposes, and this one is no exception. This is the Dane River uh, that cuts right through the middle of town. And this is the, you can see what a nice job they've done. This is the old warehouse section uh, they've turned those old brick buildings into uh, restaurants and uh, loft apartments and that sort of thing. So it's really quite pleasant to walk here along the riverfront, look at the boats moored. Some people are living in those. And this old uh, ship, sailing ship, was, she said, was kind of a mascot for the city. Uh, also just upriver from those boats you saw a minute ago. So now we boarded a bus and we went to a place called Palanga, which is about a half an hour from Lipeda. And uh, this is a major tourist destination, as it turns out. This statue of a woman with a snake 
is part of some local folklore. I didn't get the whole story, so I can't give it to you. But uh, this, the grounds of this estate at Palanga are absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's like walking through a huge botanical garden. And I don't know the whole backstory on the people that own this place. I did hear the lady say that they hired a French architect to come and do the design work for it. And then before World War II, they bugged out like 1941 or something, and took most of their possessions with them, and, and then it sat vacant for a while. Uh, I don't know if the Germans used it or not, but uh, it is, I think it's owned by the, by the country now, and it's, it's an amber museum up in the top floor of that, and the bottom floor is just a, uh, an example of how people lived in the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, prior to uh, 1941. So we're going to go on a tour of the Amber Museum, which is quite, really quite fascinating. The Baltic region is famous for its huge amount of amber, which is nothing more than petrified tree sap. They claim it to be uh, 50 million years old. I don't know how accurate that is, but some of it is old as 50 million years, they claim, and we'll see some of that in a minute. But this statue in front of the mansion here is a beautiful statue of Christ, and it sort of reminds me of Christ the Redeemer statue in Brazil up on top of the Sugarloaf Mountain. Uh, it is a, a beautiful casting. So the gardens here are immaculately kept, lots of flowers, not quite as nice as Monet's garden in France, but beautiful nonetheless. The thing that intrigued me is that Husqvarna automatic mower that you can see there, doing an immaculate job of keeping that grass trimmed perfectly. I'm going to have to get one of those. Anyway, so upstairs in the mansion, this is the uh, Amber Museum. And I do my best to show you some of the highlights of it in the short time that we have. That necklace was, was made of amber. And I don't know how much it's worth, but uh, this piece, huge piece of amber here, they claim is 50 million years old. So I don't know if that dating methodology is correct. Plenty old. And the interesting thing about amber is that it gets stuff inside of it inside the sap before it gets uh, petrified. And so they call them inclusions. And this first part of the museum here just shows beautiful pieces of amber that have been found in the Baltic region. And it's, I think, actually a big business. They sell a lot of amber to uh, tourists that to come. But you can see beautiful, it's a petrified sap, basically, tree sap. Uh, but the interesting part of the inclusions, things that get stuck inside the amber that are just as old as however old the amber is. So they could get actual DNA samples out of these bugs, you can see. So they have, they're showing what is in the amber and in that little uh, magnifying glass, you can actually see the little bugs. Inside the amber. It's kind of hard to catch it with the camera lens, but some of these other ones coming up are a little better. There's the bristle tails, moss, I guess, or something. Yeah. So they've actually been able to get DNA from those things that are petrified in the amber. It's fascinating. Stone flies, mayflies, dragonflies. I guess the amber with those inclusions in it is worth a lot more than the regular amber. Grasshoppers, crickets. Fascinating to me. Anyway, here's the bottom floor. 
just showing what the rich and famous lived in the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, prior to 1941. So beautiful garden out in the back. We'll take a little closer look at that in a minute. But this house, it's not obscene like the uh, the palace we went to that was the equivalent of uh, Versailles. This one just looks like it's a, a comfortable house to live in with reasonable decorations and stuff that a wealthy family might have. And here's their beautiful backyard, again, designed by a French architect. Garden now just past those trees is the beach. And we're going to take a walk to the beach a little later on. So this is now away from the palace and in the town of Palanga. And uh, Laurie promised that our front yard would look like these flowers next year when she when we get home. <laughs> She's not laughing. <laughs> anyway, beautiful flowers. <laughs> uh, it's that time of year now. It's the summertime, and you can only get maybe four months of summer, so they gotta enjoy it while they can. But it was a perfect day. So this now is the main street there, that upside down house is, is on this pedestrian street that runs from the center of town all the way to the beach. And we were able to find a really nice place to have lunch. And then we took the walk all the way down to the beach. And this place is really the jewel of the Baltic. It is so beautiful. Nice white sandy beaches and actually the this is something I didn't understand before, but the Baltic is not that deep. And so it's not that cold in the summertime. Apparently it gets you know, enough heat from the sun, but there were a lot of people out on the other side of the pier here bathing. Uh, we didn't have enough time to go in the water, or I would have. We had to get back to the ship because we had a <clears throat> 4.30 all aboard time today. So just look at this here for fishing out there and the beach was crowded with locals that come to this as a, as a vacation spot. So if you come back to Lithuania, you plan on spending some time in Palanga. A few days would be wonderful here. Lots of hotels and places to stay. Anyway, that's, uh, that's Klaipeda and Palanga, Lithuania. And look at that beautiful beach. So stay tuned for tomorrow because we're going to overnight sail to Rhone, Denmark. So we'll be producing another video tomorrow from Rhone on our adventures there. But we had a stellar day here. It really couldn't have been any better. It was the temperature was perfect and there was a slight breeze and it was just a wonderful day. But it uh, looked to be not a very good tour in the morning turned out to be a fantastic one by the time the day was over. So I guess they saved the best for last. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow.